Hi friends. I uh, was asked to talk a little bit about my work with wonder. I've been spending some time over the past few years developing and trying to understand and noticing qualities uh, of people that have a, a really developed practice of wonder. I found seven of those qualities that I really focus in on and try to work with and practice and grow into and refine for myself and in the communities that I find myself serving and living. The qualities that I have identified that for me um, mark a person or a place uh, where I notice the most wonder are, um, I've broken them to seven. So the first being uh, equanimity, curiosity, the second, third, play, fourth, a sense of authority, whose authority, what's yours, what's mine, what's the universe's, freedom, vulnerability, which I think I've been laying and playing with a lot recently, and vitality. So equanimity for me is that ability to not um, place good or bad labels on anything, but to see things for what they actually are. Now I know I bring my own stuff to that, um, but in seeing things and not labeling them immediately as a certain way or a certain thing or a certain perspective, I'm able to grasp perhaps a bigger picture which leads me to be able to wonder about why something might be happening. So I can't find my shoes in the morning. I don't label that good or bad. It just is, I can't find my shoes. It doesn't mean something in an alternate universe or um, something happened to me in the past. It just is. And being able to see things just as they are lead me to be able to wonder and move me ultimately into a new space in thinking. Um, the second um, element of curiosity is again that similar sense of being able to be present right where you are and to get curious in that place. When you feel stuck in your old ways of thinking or stuck in that universal wishing um, being curious and opening our minds to the curiosity of um, what could be um, and what that might look like also is a typical way of then moving into that space of wondering for me. And I've seen it work in communities that get stuck on one idea, opening up the curiosity piece, the curiosity basket gives us some tools to think outside again of ourselves, to be curious about our neighbors in ways perhaps we haven't before, to enable that ability to again, just see things and ask questions. A third element is play. Play requires me, requires us, to get over ourselves, to get over myself enough to move into a space where I don't know the outcome, where I truly am enjoying being, where I am maybe not embarrassed when I roll a gutter ball, where I don't get mad at myself if I fall off my bicycle while I'm having a good time losing a game, when I'm playing. All of those qualities that come with play, the things we've learned over the years of our lives about play, about winning and losing, and what it feels like and how to work through it, lead us to a place of being able to wonder. So when we get stuck and aren't sure and want to get into that place of wonder, it might require us to stop and to take ourselves less seriously. Another element of this is authority, and that goes along with taking ourselves less seriously. What do we really have the power to control and what don't we? And where does it meet? And how are we using that gift and skill? 
It can go either way. Sometimes we take control of things that aren't ours, that we have no power over or authority. And sometimes we don't actually notice, actually notice the authority we might have or the authority others have given to us. So examining that in a deliberate practice and being intentional about listing um, what you have the authority over, in, with, and through, and what you don't, again, gives you the space to wonder. When you know enough about yourself, wonder becomes a natural next step because you've named the qualities and gifts you carry. And one of those qualities that again leads to wonder, in addition to equanimity and curiosity and play and authority, is a sense of where freedom exists in it all. A question I like to ask myself when I get stuck is where is the freedom in that? Not just for me, but for other people. Where is the freedom in the decision I have made? And where does there need to be more freedom? And where there needs to be more freedom and where the freedom exists is a place of wondering. So as we develop these qualities, as we look into those spaces, we then start to use the wonder language. And what I have noticed is that when I start to use that language, conversations shift. So this is a kind of multi-level thing. We develop these qualities and then we wonder. We start to use the language of wonder. Leading me to the last two qualities that we develop alongside this wondering is the sense of vulnerability that comes with this way of being and thinking. To be able to wonder requires us to be vulnerable and to be able to listen and hear other perspectives and be willing to change, not just our minds, but our whole hearts and beings. Vulnerability can sometimes, after much practice, lead us to healing from brokenness we didn't even know we had. Times when I have been most vulnerable and been able to say, I need you. And your thoughts and your helps and your prayers have led me to a sense of holing, healing. <laughs> I guess that's a new word, holiness and healing all at once. A sense of holing, becoming more whole because I'm willing to be vulnerable with others. And that leads me to the last quality that I've examined, and it talks about vitality. What is vital? What is essential? And once you've named what's essential, what's most true, what's most vital, and laid that down, not as something to give up, but as something to name, a natural next step can be wondering. So leading from this place of vitality, what makes you you? What's essential? What can't go away? What never will go away? What don't you want to go away? And in that space, in that threshold moment is a place to wonder. So for me, wondering is that universal way of saying, I wonder, what if? But within it are these layers and these qualities and these practices. And they're lifelong qualities to develop and to practice. And they come alongside any great new idea or thing or revision of something that was great once and we hope to be great again. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. So as you abide in wonder, I invite you to practice and to notice those qualities in yourself and to develop them and grow them in community with others to practice equanimity, curiosity, play, vulnerability, vitality, to know your authority and to place and experience the freedom that comes in all of that, to develop those qualities as you start to interject that word wonder into your days. 
What would it look like when you get stuck in a meeting or stuck in a conversation or stuck in that conversation in your head and translate it and start to use the word wonder? Start to say it out loud. Abiding in wonder with wonder means being present right now to the possibilities that could be and bringing to that all that you have learned about who you are and who God is in this world right now and who God intended for us to be at the birth of creation. So to abide is to hold it all and to make space for that little word, that big idea, to wonder.